Come on. Come on. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. How many know he's worthy of all of your praise, all of the glory, all of the honor? Come on. Glory to God. If tears are falling down your face, you can give God praise. Glory to God. And, and understand that praise changes your atmosphere. Yeah. Praise changes. Glory to God. Your perspective. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Bless him. We praise the name of the Lord tonight. I'm so grateful. So God, the great Lord. Is Sister Arnold on? Sister Arnold? Okay. All right. Good. She was trying to get on. Yeah, her. I'm here. I'm here. We was working on it. You made it. Glory okay, to God. Praise God. I'm here. Started, that's what happens when you don't quit. We was on there. She was working that thing, trying to get on. And I'm listening to y'all and then talking to her. And, and so <laughs> I, I saw her come on. I saw Moto. I said, I think that's her. Glory to God. So praise <laughs> God. Y'all clap your hand for perseverance and pressing. Glory to God. God bless you, Sister Arnold. You are an encouragement Thank to me. Thank you, Pastor. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Um, you know, we we give God glory, and we're getting ready to get into the Bible study. It's that time. But 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 we've got to give God glory and thank him for the Holy Spirit, which is power. Amen. Power. It's power. It's the power to effect change in the life, in your life, and those around you by the, the change effected in your life. Do you not know that when the Holy Ghost is operating in your life, not only does it change you, but people interact with you differently because of the power of God operating through you. Can I talk to somebody? Glory to God. When you are operating in the Holy Spirit, people have to operate differently because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And then let me grab a phrase that was used earlier today. I had to write it down in the chat. And then when the Holy Ghost is effectively working through you, you're rapture ready. <laughs> Glory to God. Ah, you're rapture ready. Glory to God. When you allow the Holy Ghost to, that's what he came for. He came to keep you rapture ready. Glory to God. And whenever you get just slightly out of balance, he, you, he'll, he'll start to shake you a little bit. Glory to God. Say, you out of balance. Glory to God. Get back in balance. All right. Now, nah, there you go. All right. And that's what the Holy Ghost is for. And saints of God, we've been talking about the Holy Ghost just about all year long. Amen. And, and I don't see any reason to change. It is so critical. Uh, too many people have moved on in their own strength and their own power and made a shipwreck. Amen. Glory to God. Sometimes the Holy Ghost works through us and somehow the enemy gets you shifted and, and gets you twisted and make you think because the Holy Ghost was working through you that it was you and not him working through you. Glory to God. And so anyway, I want to thank God for everybody that's on this line tonight. And we're going to get to the Bible study. Let me honor the Lord for all of those of you. You know how we do. We call out names. But if y'all would let me get, get away with that tonight. Let, let, let me move on with that. Okay, let me dispense with the protocol because I do know who to call. But 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 let me let me let me dispense with that tonight. And let's get right to the study of God's word. Uh missionary Edmondson is going to be teaching tonight. This is our head missionary. Amen. One of the senior saints in the Lord, glory to God. And she's going to minister to us tonight. Now, listen, let me tell you how we do this. I want to remind all of y'all, if there's a question, raise your hand. Glory to God. If you've got a concern, raise your hand. If there's something you don't know, raise your hand. Amen. Because we don't want to leave this place, uh, glory to God, getting information and not understand it. So we have wrong application. So we have information and no ability for application. That can end up causing devastation. Can I talk to somebody? All right. Listen, I just was trying to make it a rhyme, but it was true. All right. Listen, would you all clap your hands and receive missionary, amen, Lorraine Judy Edmondson. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Pastor, I greet you and my first lady and all the saints in the most high God. Uh, you know, I just, I just thank God. You see this lesson, um, not because I'm teaching it, but man, this lesson journey. When you think about journeying the Holy Ghost, this lesson, it, it's, it spoke to me so much. And like I said, if, if you're teaching something and it doesn't resonate with you, then I guess, I don't know. But um, this lesson, you know, it's a very good lesson, Journey in the Holy Ghost. 
And you know, while I was thinking about it, I remember this song. I'm not going to sing it, but um, Sister uh, Missioner Burnett, she always said, Oh, Missioner Edmondson, you always have a song for everything. And I like that, you know, and I'm thinking about joining the Holy Ghost. Just imagine where you were and where you are right now. That's a journey, right? And the song said, as I journey through this land, singing as I go, pointing souls to Calvary, to the crimson flow, many arrows pierce my soul from without within, but my Lord leads me on through him. I must win. And the chorus say, oh, I want to see him. Hey, mm -hmm. glory. Just to look upon his face. <laughs> Woo, Jesus. After I finish this journey, can you imagine? I want to see him. And then I went back and I think about, okay, we're taking a journey. We're taking a road trip. It depends on how much gas you have in the car. I don't know how many how many stops you might have to make. Two stops, maybe just one stop. But you got to fill up. Because if you don't, you ain't going nowhere. You ain't going nowhere if you run out of gas. And if it's just half quarter tank and it's half a tank to take you back home, you better get that half in. Or else you'll be staying right where you are. And I'm just thinking, joining with the Holy Ghost. We can't stop halfway. We can't stop a quarter of the way. We can't stop in the middle. We can't run out. We got to be filled up. All the way up. And just keep on getting it. Keep on refilling. And I encourage those tonight as I go in this lesson. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, I pray. I beseech you. I will fast with you to get the Holy Ghost, because you need it in times like this. We need it. We need the Holy Ghost. And so our lesson is journeying in the Holy Ghost. And I first I said, let me begin by saying, opening our hearts to the, to the gentle whisper of the Holy Spirit often means setting aside our own stubborn will. You know, we got some stubborn will. I've been like this all along. I ain't changing. I've been like this since I was a little girl. Don't you think it's about time you get rid of that stubborn will? Now that you ain't a little girl no more? You grown woman? Are you grown man? Don't you think it's time you get rid of that old stubborn will that's keeping the Holy Ghost from working in you and through you? So others can see. Yeah, so we have to set aside our stubborn will. We can't go on and saying, from I was a little girl, from I was a teenager, from I was a young lady, I've been, no, cut it up. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Get enough Holy Ghost that will, that will take away that stubborn will. Get enough Holy Ghost that will cut that stubborn will away. Get enough Holy Ghost in you that you forgot that stubborn will and the things that you would want to do, you know? And so my first, my first, my first part is led by the Holy Ghost. And I look it up in Galatians 5, 22 to 23. And it's like gentleness, self-control, that stubborn will that you don't want to give up, that you have from a childhood or whatever, self-control against such there is no law. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. That's the fruit of the spirit. So that stubborn will get you some love. Just get you some love. And if that is not enough, get a little joy in it. And if, if the joy is still there and you still feel like, oh, I'm still a little stubborn, put a little peace on it. Huh? And the peace is still there, but you're still kind of lingering and hanging on to that. Ooh, long suffering. You got to go through it to get out that stubborn will, to get out of that, that the way, get, out, get that out of the way so you can get in God's way, so you can get in God's will, so you can do God's will. And, and, and after that long suffering, I tell you, when you get out, you, you're going to have some kindness. You're going to have to be kind. You can't be mean all the time. 
you're gonna have to be kind you know the other day i was at the at the church giving out some food and there's this lady and she always make this big fuss and she's the only one just fussing quarreling with everybody and i looked at her i went over to her i said i said miss i said aren't you tired of being mean Aren't you tired? I said, well, I'm tired of watching you being mean and I'm not the one mean. Aren't you tired? And she look at me and I tell you, she, <laughs> she was quiet for the whole time until she left. So I'm, I'm like saying, man, are you tired of being mean? <laughs> Do you want to have some kindness? Do you want to have some goodness in you? That I won't be scared to come to you? That I won't be scared to... I just walk by so fast, you know, because you're not kind, you're not, you don't have no peace, you don't have no love, you don't have no joy. And then I see you and I'm like, I'm hurrying to, to go past you because I don't want to stop, you know, because I don't want that unkindness. And then on top of it, get you some faithfulness, be faithful in whatever you're doing. Be faithful. Be faithful to God. Be faithful to read in the word. Be faithful to fasting. Just be faithful in whatever you're doing. Be faithful. And it said choosing to respond with kindness and patience in a situation where you feel wrong or frustrated. Just think about the fruit of the spirit. Yeah, there are a lot of times when we feel wrong and we are frustrated and we want to lash out. But you know, saints, we have to remember that we are not, we are not back there. We are here. I'm not the, the girl that I used to be back there. I've been changed. So yes, we will feel wrong. Yes, we will feel frustrated. But if you are led by the Holy Ghost, if you are led by the Holy Ghost, that wrong and that frustration, the Holy Ghost is going to talk to you unless you don't listen to it. But if you are led by the Holy Ghost, it's either you'll walk away, you'll close your mouth for another day, or you just be quiet. Yes, I know it's hard. You're wrong. You're frustrated. This has been happening. It seems like there's no end to it. But you'll be led by the Holy Ghost, saints. Let us be led by the Holy Ghost. Because, okay, just listen, you carrying on like that. You're not led by the Holy Ghost. And there's somebody out there looking at you. How can you win that soul? And that person here, you carrying on like that? And you feel with the Holy Ghost. It's not that you don't have the Holy Ghost. You got it. But you are not being led by the Holy Ghost when you started to take matters into your own hand. And so... There's somebody, I tell you, there is someone, it doesn't matter where you go, there is someone that's looking at you. Yeah, someone is looking at you. You don't see them, but they see you. <coughs> you don't see them, but they see you. And so you have to be careful. Whether we're in the church, whether we're at home, on the street, with our family, it's even worse with our family because they be the one that is ready. They don't go to church, they barely read the Bible, but they'll tell you what the Bible say. So we have to be careful. So saints, let us be led by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost, he won't lead you wrong. The Holy Ghost, I, I, was, I was looking at a thing and I said, if you, if you send that, send in a letter, I'm sending a letter to the church. I got to put a stamp on it. Because if I don't, that letter won't go where it's supposed to be. I have to put a stamp on that letter. And that, that stamp on that letter, it got to stick to that letter. It got to stick to it. It cannot come off. Because if it come off, it's going to return to sender. So that, that stamp is going to stick to that one thing. You know what? That one thing, that letter that you put it on, that one thing. Thing. So the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, the Holy Ghost got to stick to us. We got to have the Holy Ghost sticking, sticking on us. It can't come out. Because that's what going to take us home. 
That's what gonna take us to glory. The Holy Ghost gotta be that 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 stamp. That's like on that letter. We gotta let it stick to us. So wherever we go, wherever we go, we should be led by the Holy Ghost. I don't care where we go, whether you're on vacation, you're not on vacation, you go you wherever you go, you gotta be led by the Holy Ghost. That Holy Ghost got to stick on you like that. You see the Holy Ghost that we have? They, nothing can take it off of us. It's there. It's on the inside. It's there. Nothing can take it out of us. Sometimes you send a letter, the stamp, it might lose a stamp somewhere along the stamp came off. But this Holy Ghost, it's going to take you wherever you want to go. So choose kindness, choose patient, choose love, choose joy, choose peace, choose long suffering, long suffering. Yes, they did you wrong, long suffering. Yes, you are frustrated, long suffering. You remember when you, oh, you used to frustrate people before you got saved and how you were wrong before you got saved? What do you choose today when somebody wrong you and frustrate you? What do you choose if you are led by the Holy Ghost and all these fruits of the Spirit? What do you choose? Hmm? What do you choose? Do you choose love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness? Or do you choose to put it in your own hand. I ain't gonna let nobody talk to me like that. I ain't gonna let nobody look at me like that. What do you choose if you are led by the Holy Ghost? Choose. So you see, saints, we are a peculiar people. I am special. I am special. You are special. Because we are bought with a price. And you know what that price? It wasn't even money that we were bought with. It was his precious blood. So saints, whatever you do, wherever you go, whatever you're going to say, whatever your eyes going to look on, whatever your hands going to touch, wherever your feet going to go, whatever your mouth going to hope to say, be led by the Holy Ghost. That's Sister right. Ivory had her hand up. Go ahead, Sister Ivory. Praise God. I was just thinking when you were given the, um, when you said, what do you choose? I just wanted to make the statement that I choose peace. I could remember a time in my life when I didn't have peace. And um, it's just a joy to know that we, by being in the Holy Ghost, by being saved, that all of these things, all these attributes are offered to us. And I mm -hmm. choose peace. Amen. 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 What do you choose when tough time come upon you? What do you choose when all around you is sinking sun? What do you choose? And you know you're led by the Holy Ghost. What do you choose when the bills are so high and no money? What do you choose when your kids acting up? What do you choose? Eh? Hallelujah. I pray that we choose one of the fruits of the spirit. If not, if you can't choose one, two, three, four, choose them all. Because they're going to benefit to us. All of them is good for me. <laughs> all of it. I choose all the fruit of the spirit. <laughs> Who else hands are up? Is there anyone else? Okay, let's move on. The second one is feed the Holy Spirit. Ghost, feed the Holy Ghost. I want to ask a question. How how do you feed the Holy Ghost? Feed the Holy Ghost. After you be led by him, then hey, you got to feed him, right? How do you feed the Holy Ghost? Romans 10 and 17. What do you say? So then faith comes hearing and hearing by the word of God. Then I, 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 in my little thing, I said, set aside daily time for reading the word and reflection allows the word to build your faith in the Holy Ghost as you hear and apply it to your daily life. Feeding the Holy Ghost. 
Read the word, read the word, read the word. You can never go wrong reading the word. Read the word. One of the main thing our pastor, he said, get a scripture and get a song. Feed the Holy Ghost so it won't be dormant. Feed the Holy Ghost so it will stay alive in you. Feed the Holy Ghost so it won't be lukewarm. Feed the Holy Ghost so it won't be cold. So you'll be able to stand. So set a time, set in a time. I remember that Macklin had told us, he said, take 10 minutes. He said, take 10 minutes out of your busy time, wherever you go. If you got to go in the bathroom, wherever you got to go, he said, take 10 minutes and tell God about you. Nobody else. Just tell God about you. Just setting that time aside. Just setting that time aside to say, you know what? I'm going to turn the TV off. I'm going to get off my phone. And I'm just going to hear what the word said today. What does the word say today? Because I don't know when I go outside what's going to happen out there. Go ahead, Pastor. There was a couple scriptures. 2 Timothy 2.15 uh, talks about study to show yourself approved unto God. Mm-hmm. Workmen that I need do. not be ashamed, ashamed right? The divided mm -hmm. word of truth, word studying truth. that word, even as you were talking about studying to show yourself approved unto God. And then uh, Jude talks about, uh, but beloved, build yourselves up on your most holy, yeah, most faith. holy faith. Glory to God. And uh, it is important when we do that. Um, uh, he says, continually pro progress in the Amplified, continually progress, rise like the edifice higher and higher. Pray mm -hmm. in the Holy Spirit and keep yourselves in the love of God. Glory to God. Waiting anxiously, glory to God, uh, looking forward to the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ, which will uh, bring you to eternal life, rapture ready. Mm -hmm. But I'm trying to tell you right now, <laughs> building yourself up in your most holy faith, holy studying faith. God's word. Yes, faith, right. faith, yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Studying God's word. Stop procrastinating. Study God's word. Read the word. Read the word. Don't know we got the word on our phone so we can say, oh, I forgot my Bible. You know, you got it on your phone. You can find time to read the word. See what the word said today. See who you can bless the word. You know, sometimes when you read the word, you meet somebody and that same word, you can tell that person the same word. God gave you that word for today. And maybe it meant for somebody else. So you have to read the word. You have to read the word. And you have to set, set aside time to read the word. Because imagine, okay, imagine if we don't eat. You get up, you're thinking about breakfast. Sometimes by the time you finish, you're thinking about lunch. After lunch, you're thinking about dinner. Before you go to bed, you think, oh, I got a snack and something. So don't you think the Holy Ghost need, need to be fed too? Spiritually, if we can feed ourselves naturally, we can do without naturally. What do you think about the Holy Ghost? How are we going to keep you and you don't feed him? You don't read the word. You don't, you, don't, you don't get in touch with him. You don't talk to him. You know, you don't let him lead you. You don't let him guide you. You don't let him build you. So we have to feed the Holy Ghost. Amen. Okay, let's go to the next setting. Um, strengthening in the Holy Ghost. Strength. Brother and I, I choose... Um, huh? Go Brother ahead. Brother Keys has his hand up. Go ahead, Elder Keys. God bless you, Miss Nick. God bless you, everyone. Hey, Amen. I just want to piggyback off of that. Hey, Amen. Hebrews, the fourth chapter, verse number 12 says, mm -hmm. For the word of God, and many of you can see the, it's the scripture that's behind me. Amen. This has become a mm -hmm. word for me. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two edged straw, <laughs> piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit and of the <laughs> joints and metal yes. and is a dishonor of the thoughts and the intents of the hearts. We have to let this word penetrate. We have mm. to let this word marinate. Amen. Whenever we want yes. to make a good steak, amen, some good mm. food, 
Our parents right. just said, let that thing marinate overnight. Mm -hmm. Amen. The Bible <laughs> said, Mer meditate on the word what? Day and night. Night. Amen. So we have to let it meditate, intake on it, in, uh, get on the inside of us. Let it take mm -hmm. hold. Let those juices mm. of the world take hold. Mm. Let it tenderize us. Let it marinate us in the world. Let us be strong. Yes. Amen. In the word of God, let God do what he said he's going to do in the world. God bless you. Amen. For he is the Use word. the word. Yes. Let it sink in. Digest it. Digest the word. Let it sink. My God. God, it's good to say, and the joint and marrow. Can you imagine? You, you, you know, if you're cooking something, you're going to season it real good. So you let it marinate. So the word of God, you let it marinate inside of you. Let it fill you up. So that when the enemy comes, I tell you, when the enemy comes for you, you'll be able to stand because you got the word inside of you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. And the next one is strengthening in the Holy Ghost. And I choose um, Ephesians 3 and 16. And it says that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. The inner man. Spending time in prayer, asking God to strengthen your inner being during time of personal challenge or weakness. So see, we come back to the, for the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Spending time in prayer. Spend time in prayer, saints. Spend time in prayer. Learn to pray. Learn to pray and read the word. That's our strength. That's what's going to keep us. That's what's going to take us through. Open the word of God and read it for yourself. Let the word minister to you. Feed upon the word of God. Because there are times when we come up and, and struggle, personal challenges, some we can't even talk about. We can't let nobody know except Jesus Christ. And that's when we need to go into prayer. And some of us, we have weaknesses. Weaknesses. Whatever era there is weakness. Saints, there's a word. That you might be strengthened through his spirit. In the inner mind. That weakness that you have. That weakness that is taking you over. That weakness that you can't control. Go to the word of God. He will strengthen you. He, got, he, he give the strength that no other, no other can give the strength like he does. When you feel weak and you feel all alone and you feel like you're the only one going through. God will give you that strength. But you got to go down to him. You got to spend time in praying. And you know, don't wait until the trouble comes. Keep on praying. Yes, the trouble will come, but you keep on praying. Pray in the trouble. Pray in the trouble till the trouble leave. Pray in the weakness till the weakness leave. Just keep on praying. Keep on trusting. Keep on believing God. Keep on believing God that he will strengthen you. He will strengthen you. He will strengthen you. I guarantee you will strengthen you. It might not seem like it right now because you're going through it. And you feel like, I don't know if I'm ever going, I don't know if I can smile again. I don't know if I can laugh again. Trust God. Trust God. As the days go by, as the weeks go by, and you spending time with God in prayer, He's going to strengthen that inner being. He's going to strengthen that inner being during those challenging times, during those weakness. He will strengthen you. When I lost my grandmother that raised me, I thought the world hen. I thought I would never, ever be able to come back to. But look at God. 
But look at God. Spend time in praying and asking God to give it to God. You know, a lot of times we do, we um instead of us giving it to God, we give it to everybody else except God. We give it to everybody else except God. But sometimes we just got to just go in our little secret place, wherever your secret place is, and just say, Lord, here I am. And just tell him. He knows what to do. He knows exactly what to do. Yes, you tell me, but all I can do is just pray and ask God. I'm still going to pray and ask God to strengthen you. To keep you, to guide you, to protect you. And don't let that weakness overcome you. Don't let that personal challenge take you over. That we don't see you no more. You don't come to the church no more. Go ahead, Pastor. I wanted to, this is a wonderful scripture you have here. That's why, you know, I say to everybody, please get your Bibles. Glory to God. When he's going through these, because glory to God, it is so critical to really uh, know, you know, what you're reading and, and, and kind of get this even in context, because this is so deep. He says, you know, uh, Paul, Paul, as he's writing to the church at Ephesus, he's saying to them, I'm praying Glory to God, to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In verse 16, mm -hmm. where you are, he says, that he grant you according to mm -hmm. the riches of uh, his, his glory, glory to be strengthened mm -hmm. with might through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may mm -hmm. be able to comprehend with all the saints, with all of us, mm -hmm. what is the width and the length and the depth and the height to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. He's saying, mm. glory to God, he wants to fill you so much so that, that, that everything is full with height, depth, glory to God, that you're rooted and grounded in this thing. Mm -hmm. So you no more tossed to and fro by every wind and doctrine, by everybody that say something uh, mm -hmm. that hurts your feelings about everything. Glory to God, that's done, that, that offends you. And you're not offended so easily because you're rooted in this thing. And you understand the depth and the width of God so that you Amen. understand even when things don't go the way you want them to go, uh, when you're dealing with, not talk about grief, when you're dealing with grief, glory to God, when you're dealing mm. with sickness, you understand that God is yet God and your faith is strong enough to carry you through those things that you have not quite understood yet, that you don't mm -hmm. see yet. Uh, and even though you don't see God's uh, hand, you know his heart. Right. Amen. But then there's another thing. Are you, are you, are you making yourself available? Are you going to be there? Are you there? Or did you left? Have you left? Or are you still there at the altar? Waiting for him. To just strengthen you. Without according to his riches and glory. All that he said. Are you available? That when he's ready to bless you. He can find you. Huh? Are you there? You stable, huh? Don't be unstable. You better be stable. You better be stable. Rooted and grounded. So that when that time comes, he can give you the full length, the width, the height, the depths. My God, you will come out. You will come out shouting. Hey, look where he brought me from. But are you making yourself available? Can he find you when he's ready to pour out all that he promised on you? Make sure you are stable and you are connected and you are on that solid ground. You're on that solid ground. Amen. And let's go to the next one. Um, conviction of the Holy Ghost. Here we go. Conviction. Conviction of the Holy Ghost. Huh. Don't he convict us a lot of time, but do we listen? Do we listen when he convicts us? Do we hear? And we just want to go our own way. And I choose John 16, verse 8. And it says, and when he has come, 
he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. He will. It's not for me and you to go around judging and carrying on with people. He said when he comes. When he comes, he will convict the world of sin. We are not God. And of righteousness and of judgment. Conviction of the Holy Ghost. The willingness to change behaviors that the Holy Spirit had already convicted you about. Are you willing to change your behavior before you, the Holy Ghost is already convicting you? You ain't listening, but then you want to come and convict me. Hmm? The willingness to change our behavior, change my behavior. The Holy Ghost convicted me, telling me, hey, Missionary Edmonds, it's wrong. Don't go there. Don't do that. Don't answer that phone call. Don't talk. Don't this. Don't that. I, did I listen? No. I didn't listen. And I'd be going around doing what I want to do. But let me catch you doing it. Woo, Jesus, I'm ready to convict you. I'm ready to persecute you. I'm ready to bring judgment. <laughs> I'm ready to bring judgment on you. Who am I? And when he convict me, I, I did him change my behavior. I didn't do anything. I kept on doing what I what, what, what I want to do. But let me catch you doing it. But you know the thing is when the Holy Ghost convict conviction, the Holy Ghost convict you, you need to listen. Because God doesn't want any of us. He said it's not his will that any, any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So when the Holy Ghost spoke to you, saints of God, as long as it's the Holy Ghost, listen what the Holy Ghost said. Listen. And if you're not walking straight, try your best to get straight. Try your best. And before you come out and try to convict me or bring judgment on me or, you know, whatever you want to bring on me as if you are God. Sometimes we just got to take, take the mirror from off. Half of that person, I got to take the mirror from off that person and I got to look in the mirror for myself and see where I am with God, where I stand with God. When the Lord told me the Holy Ghost convict me not to do that, did I listen or did I override it? Did I go with what he says? Did I change my behavior? The way that I talk? The way that the life that I live, how I go about, you know, destroying people with my mouth or my eyes or my hands or my feet, whatever I use. And so, saints, we have to change our behavior pattern. We have to change our behavior. We can we can go on doing the same thing, doing the same thing. Jesus is soon to come. We've been hearing it, but now we know for sure that he's coming soon. So we have to change our behavior. And, and it's not like you're going to wait until you come to change your behavior. No. You start changing your behavior now. Look at yourself. Look in your life. See how you live. And there's a song that says, leave Babylon. That means leave the world and come on in. Look in your life. See how you live. And you will get that conviction. Amen. So listen to the Holy Ghost. And those, you know, if you're on the line and you ain't got the Holy Ghost, you ain't got no experience with it, seek after it. Get that experience. Get that Holy Ghost experience. And I guarantee your life will never be the same. Your life will never be the same. You won't be the same either. And when you get the Holy Ghost, listen to the Holy Ghost. Listen to the Holy Ghost. Keep the Holy Ghost alive. Keep it alive. Keep it alive. Don't keep it lukewarm, cold. Keep the Holy Ghost alive. Praying, reading the word. 
cut out all them misbehavior. What it what it says? Things I used to do, I do them no more. Things I used to say, I say them no more. You've been in this thing a long time. And you're still saying, uh, oh, it's sleep or whatever. No. It's there. No, you've been you've been too long. You've been too long. Praise God. So, saints, I'm telling you, journey to the Holy Ghost. Like the, the whole people would say, take the Lord along with you everywhere you go. The Holy Ghost, it's, it's here. We take it everywhere we go. Everywhere we go, everywhere we go, the Holy Ghost goes with us. That's the thing we have to remember. The Holy Ghost goes with us. God goes with us. So don't think this because I'm, I'm behind door. I'm at my house. He's, yes, he's here. Go ahead, Mother Spartan. Okay, I do have a question on, on okay, uh, mm -hmm. Ephesians 5 and 30. It says, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Okay, and what the uh, question I have is, what does it mean whereby you are sealed until the day of redemption? Is there anyone who'd like to answer that? You are sealed until the day of redemption. Come on. Is there I any of my elders, my missionary, or my deaconess want to answer that one? Sealed. Woo. When you seal something, mm. sealed until the day of redemption. Go ahead. I think I Sister Muriel. Go ahead. Praise the Lord. I will just give it a, a shot, a try here, but I believe that 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 means that till the day of redemption, till the day you are redeemed, brought home finally. Does it mean that mm -hmm. that you are sealed once that it says, "Greet not the Holy Spirit of God," yes. whereby you are sealed until the day of redemption? Does it say you don't greet the Holy Spirit, but no, you once you're sealed. To the day of redemption is that like a long term is once you're sealed to the day of redemption you're sealed you can't get unsealed that's kind of like what my question is okay missionary rick maiden god bless you a uh, beautiful lesson tonight missionary thank you so much for the word um as long as we are walking in accordance and in alignment with god's will in relationship with him we can walk away from listening to the Holy Ghost, right? And this goes back to like our diet and what we're eating. And I'm a vegetarian. I'm not going to go sit at a Brazilian steakhouse and eat meat. I'm going to go um, where my heart is, where my desire is, where my appetite mm -hmm. is. And so if we are not walking in alignment with God, uh, chasing after him, being obedient to his word, doing what the scripture tells us to do, allowing the Holy Ghost to lead us instead of us trying to coach the Holy Ghost what to do for us, but allowing him to lead us, then we're out of alignment. So when we're out of alignment, people say, oh, once you're saved, you're always saved. I don't believe that. I believe if we don't repent for the things that we say, do, or think daily that goes against who God is, then we need to repent daily amen this flesh is all consuming and it's never satisfied and it is an enemy of god so we must understand oh, that <laughs> whatever our appetite is then that's where our heart will be so if we truly want to walk upright before god we are going to allow the holy ghost to lead us jesus dying on the cross and being raised from the dead was enough but because he lived in this world although he was not of this world he understood the plight of humanity it's it's all sin so he sent a holy ghost he sent the holy ghost to lead god and direct us to keep us on track if we allow it but because we are who we are 
we sometimes want to take over. We sometimes <laughs> want to direct folks. We sometimes want to direct our own destiny. And we're so out of line because we're listening to things and people and eating unhealthy things spiritually that we're sick. And when mm -hmm. we're sick, we become emboldened sometimes. We say things that are inappropriate, but Satan has you believing you saying the right thing. You done hurt somebody. You cut somebody off. You wounded somebody, but Satan is telling you, you got that right. You did what you were supposed uh. to do. You don't let nobody walk <laughs> over you. No, God forbid. We got to understand that we have to learn to get along with each other. I haven't always been there, but I'm so grateful to God that he's showing me daily. He's teaching me daily. Our words matter. What we do matter. You know, we shouldn't live our life just thinking, oh, I have to do right because someone's looking at me. No, I'm going to live right because that's what I want to do is to live right and to serve God. So, yes, we are sealed unto that day. But if we are out of alignment, if we are backsliding, then that does not cover us. We have to walk in alignment. Say saved every day. For, ask for forgiveness daily, sometimes multiple times a day. We can't get twisted and let people tell us, oh, once you're saved, you're always saved. Oh, once you're sealed, oh, you're always sealed. God will cover us if we are in alignment and engaged with him as he has instructed us to do by his word. Amen. Amen. Go ahead. One more. We have one more. Go ahead, um, Missionary Shandy. <laughs> this is good. <laughs> Amen. Ooh. I am enjoying this lesson. Um, when we are sealed, God's seal of the day of redemption, it's a seal that cannot be broken. It is incapable of being broken. It, it makes certain that the saints are redeemed. It's just like going down, someone saying that you can come and redeem something, some item, some product. They say it's a guarantee that you can come down and get that if you trade it for something and Jesus, he gave his life for us on the cross. And so the redemption, his redemption is that it cannot be broken. It's a seal. It's a bond forever and it will not be broken. Okay. Amen. Now I'm a little, now <laughs> it's, it's kind of took it to no, another let me, level. No, let, let me, let Let's me hear what this. Pastor has to say. Let me address this. Is, is critical that we really understand this this uh, seal to the day of redemption. You, we, we have the Holy Ghost as a down payment on uh, on our eternal life. So the Holy Ghost came to keep us, and it was in essence a down payment. The Bible says, um, mm -hmm. but you are a free willed moral agent, mm -hmm. and you can become apostate, which means that you have changed your uh, original belief in who mm -hmm. Jesus Christ is and who he is to you. Paul dealt with this as he walked with Demas and uh, he, he walked with Demas. They did word. He talked about the work that we Demas did. But when Paul writes later towards the end of his life, he writes to Timothy and he says to him that Demas having loved the pleasure of this world has left him. All right. Mm -hmm. So we've got to be careful uh, you have the ability to disobey. That's why the scripture says, and grieve not, all right? Because you have the ability to grieve him and walk away from him. Paul talks about in the book of Romans that some have their conscience seared with a hot yeah. iron. We have mm -hmm. to understand that the Bible was not written to the people on the street, but written to the people in the church. And so Paul lets us know that you have the right, you, you have the ability to disobey, to disregard the Holy Ghost and live in sin. And if you live mm -hmm. in sin, then you'll die. Now you have to understand that he gives us another opportunity in 1 John, he says, but if you, can, if you say you have no sin, you lie and do not the truth. But if you confess your sin, mm -hmm. God is faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness, thereby the Holy Ghost reminding us that we have grieved him. We walked away from our first love and to come back, ask God to forgive you and do that. So please understand that God, you, he, you do not have free will to get saved. Mm -mm. And then God takes away your free will. So now you can't walk away from it. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. You have the ability to sin as many people do. We just had another one of my favorite pastors just walked out of the pulpit today. Glory to God. Today. 
Glory to God. One of my favorite pastors said he had sinned and he was giving up. He was walking away because of what happened. I don't know the whole story. I'm just telling you what was on the news. It's all in the news feeds. And I was, when I first saw it, I had to, oh my God. I said, my God, I listen, this guy is knowledgeable of the word. Now, I don't know what's going on with him. And I don't know what's going on with that whole situation or God. I pray for him for real. But the bottom line is, you've been saved, you have the Holy Ghost, and you still have the ability to disregard, disobey, disrespect, and walk away. Amen. Amen. It's in the Bible, nonstop. All right. And, amen, Pastor. Amen. Yes, it can be you, your cable have broken it, but thank God you can come back, you know. And one thing we have to remember is that our salvation, it's already bought and paid for. It's already bought and paid for. So, Mother Spaulding, are you satisfied with that answer? Okay, let's go to the next one as we go through. And so it's guidance of the Holy Ghost, Galatians 5 and 1. I did Galatians 5 and 1 and Romans 8 and 1. And it says, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ had made us free, and be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. And I, I had, and it said, making a decision that aligns with biblical teaching, teachings, even when it's not easy, are the most popular choice. You got to stand, saints, we got to stand fast in that liberty where Christ had made us free. I am free. Praise the Lord. What is some writers that praise the Lord? I'm free, no longer bound. No more chains on me. He said he made us free so we shouldn't be entangled again with no yoke of bondage. So you have to align yourself up with biblical teaching. What does the Bible say? You said it, but what does the Bible say? Whether it's easy, whether it's not easy are the most popular choice, but sometimes we have choices that we have to make as a child of God. And has been led by the Holy Ghost, looking guidance of the Holy Ghost. It, it might not be easy. It might not be what they want to hear. It might not be what they want to see. But stand. Stand on the word of God. Because there's, there's therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Because we don't walk after the flesh, but the spirit. So whether they like it or not, it's not easy. They want to hear something else. But because you align it with the word of God, it might not be to the tasting. It might not be to the liking. But that doesn't say you're going to form a group and, and go on with them. No. Whatever the Bible says, you go by what the Bible says. The word of God. And if the word of God don't say it, well, I, I don't know. But I'm going by the word of God. Whatever God's word said. That's what I'm going to live by. That's what I'm going to walk by. And that's what I'm going to say. I'm going to stand upon his word. I'm not going to get entangled again in, in all these saying, oh, I think so. I thought so. But what does God say? What does the word say? When last have you read the word? Somebody tell you something and you just said, oh, yeah, that's okay. Go ahead, Sister Ope Ivory. I, I so appreciate this discussion because it's thought provoking. It causes us to dig into the word of the God, uh, word of the mm -hmm. Lord, so that we can stand on His truth, right? Because heaven and earth are passed away, but God's word want. And I'm just mm -hmm. looking at Jude um, 24, where it says, "Now unto Him that is able to keep mm -hmm. us from falling, He's more than able." But we have to stay in relationship with him. He can keep us from falling. He can sell us to the day of redemption, but there's a place, a role we have to play in it because we're still free will agents. 
So now mm -hmm. we're the one who is able to keep us from falling and mm -hmm. to bring us faultless Lent. before the presence of his glory with, mm -hmm. with great and exceeding joy. Yeah. That's why it's important to stay in the word of God. That's why it's important to stay in prayer, stay in relationship, and stay in fellowship. Amen. Because he said, even if he could, he would fool the very elect. If he could. Yeah. And who are the elite? They're the ones that's in the word of God. That's Amen. Coming, that's praying. That's studying, the, studying God's word. Lord. And living this consecrated life. And so I just love the fact that God is a keeper if you want to be kept. Amen. Amen. Stand on if you say God is good. God is good. Stand on his word. He is good. Amen. Let's go to the other one. Um, prayer in the Holy Ghost. Let me say something else, please. Go uh, ahead, Pastor. I know we might not get through all of this, but this this is a this is a very important item to address. Because of all that's going on, all the perversion of the gospel that's out there and people sounding really, really good. They sound like us. They look like us. They, mm -hmm. you know, they have this whole, you know, I'm living for God. They, they can speak mm -hmm. and talk and dance and all that. But the Bible says, is there going to, can somebody uh, be saved and then walk away? The Bible says in the last days, they're going to be a great falling away, mm -hmm. a great falling away. Mm -hmm. And you can't fall away from where you've never stood. <laughs> and so it's important That's for right. us to understand that um you know some people have preached eternal security or once saved always saved mm -hmm. but that's not what the bible says uh and so it's important and he gives us examples of individuals who had been saved even in the beginning with simon glory to god the sorcerer in the book of acts he had gotten saved Mm -hmm. But when he, when Peter and those guys came down from Jerusalem and they saw, he saw the miracles being done by them and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. He said, give me, give me that. He was mm -hmm. saved, but he wasn't delivered. Right. He had to be saved by the Holy Ghost drawing him in. So if he was saved, if he had accepted Christ and he hadn't been delivered and that thing came up when it happened, he then said, uh, he, he then was, he was grieved because of what had taken place and he got it together. And so it's important for all of us to understand that you have to want to be obedient to the, to the Holy Ghost. He's going to continue to lead you and guide you. He's going to continue to nudge you and unction you. He's going to continue to pull you back and, and bump you and try and get you in line. But in the final analysis, glory to God, he's not going to put you in a headlock and tell mm -hmm. you to live holy. Mm-hmm. That's right. Mm hmm. He won't pass. Anybody that. else have? Yeah, go ahead. I think I saw Sister Muriel Han. Praise the Lord. I had uh, this this scripture in uh, in Hebrews six four through six, and mm -hmm. I maybe I'm hoping that I got this right. It says for it is impossible for those. <laughs> who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, if they fall away to renew themselves again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him mm -hmm. to an open shame. Mm -hmm. And they come back. Though eventually, that is my um question. But it says it's impossible if you've known if you so these people that are falling away, uh, pastor falling away from they've had the Holy Ghost and they've fallen away from there, they, they cannot come back. No, what that scripture speaks to is apostasy, mm -hmm. and so what happens here is those individuals have tasted, they've been a part of it, and then they denied the Holy Spirit, and take on another belief, some perversion of what they held or something else altogether. Uh, I remember, I always remember this. I was seeking, uh, I had recently been saved and uh, I was on the altar seeking the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And um, 
there was a lady on the altar with me. Uh, and at that point, uh, I had backslidden. Now, Paul talks about backsliding uh, as well, but excuse me. And, and I had backslidden, uh, and that's in Hebrews chapter two. But I had backslidden. And when I was at home one Saturday morning, that same lady came to my door with a group of Jehovah's Witnesses. And when she came mm -hmm. to my door with a group of Jehovah's Witnesses, I looked in the back of the group. She was, it was about four of them, and she was in the back. And I think she saw me and she kind of flinched a little bit. And I said, what are you doing with him? Mm. Glory to God. She mm -hmm. had taken on a whole nother belief system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Now it's impossible for her to come back to Christ because she don't believe in Christ anymore as the deity, as the, as God. She don't believe in Christ as God. She believes in him as if she believes in him, she believes in him as a, a great man, a prophet of some sort. Mm -hmm. And he's not, he's not a problem. He's God. And so we're talking here about people who have uh, had their conscience seared with a hot iron. They are apostate. Mm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, I've seen it happen. I came out of Pentecostal and I've seen sisters that fill with the Holy Ghost, shouting, singing, dancing in church. I end up at the Seventh Day Adventist. I don't want to have nothing to do with the Holy Ghost, saying it's demonic. So you know. And and the killer is, many of these individuals stay in the group with us. That's why you need the Holy Ghost to be filled with the Holy Ghost, so you have the mm -hmm. discerning of spirits. Mm -hmm. Because if the devil can transform himself into an angel of light, no wonder those that mm -hmm. follow him can do the same. They can do just like mm -hmm. us. They can fake. They can. They can. They can buck and and shake and and they got a tongue. Glory to God. All of that. And then anybody who said the mm -hmm. devil doesn't have power is being fooled. Mm -hmm. He just doesn't have okay. all power. No, he turned that down. So, yeah. I'll, you know, this is a good, this is good. We need to get it here. is. It is this good. Year, if, we didn't, if we didn't do a whole lot more, this is important for us to get clear on something. You need to be filled with the Holy Ghost so that you could protect your soul and those that are counting on you. All right. Amen. Because the enemy will come in. See, we don't get thrown off by somebody who comes in. For instance, Jehovah Witness is not going, he's not going to get me. Right. <laughs> Uh, he's not going to fool me. Uh, you, you, the devil not going to bring me the idea to smoke crack. But he will bring me, glory to God, the idea to tell a lie. And, mm -hmm. he, and he's cunning, baffling, powerful, and patient. He is. He comes in, glory to God. Uh, and so what we have to do is have the spirit so we can discern that something, I might not be able to pinpoint what it is, but something ain't right here. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? All right. Yeah. That's why we need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And then we always ought to have a repentant spirit. We need to Amen. be ready to say, Lord, I'm sorry. Not that we ought to walk around feeling guilty. No, but we ought to be ready. Amen. I, I, I keep using this, but we ought to be keeping ourselves in a place so that if Jesus come back, we're ready to go with it. Amen. If the spirit Amen. of God makes us think we said something wrong, Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I wish you'd get a, get a hold of it. And, you know, during your time, you can read it. Um, Missionary Hope Ivory. I'm sorry. Just a thought. Just no, it's okay. Mind. As a it's believer, okay. we can be confident in who we are in God yes. by standing in his word, by standing in his presence, being addicted to his presence. Because we're not on this journey where I got to guess and wonder, right? We have to know mm -hmm. that we're saved and we're living for God and the Holy Spirit will prompt us, will convict us when we're getting a little off or something not right. We're not praying enough. We're not in our word and right. we're tempers one of another. That's why it's important to fellowship and be in the house of the Lord with the other brothers and sisters because someone may be gifted, have the gift of discernment, come around and know I need that prayer, know I need that encouragement right there yeah. and there. But we can be confident as believers. Jesus Amen. Said, I could be free. I could stand on that. I could be confident that I'm raptured ready. 
Amen. Amen. Let me get everybody to turn. If you got your Bibles, turn to 2 Thessalonians 2. 2 Thessalonians 2. You got your Bible. Turn to 2 Thessalonians 2. And thank you, Missionary Ivory, as well, because it is critical that we study the Word. As you talked about earlier, feeding our spirits with the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Feeding our spirits with the Word of God. 2 Thessalonians 2 says that ye not be soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us as yes. that the day of Christ is at hand. Is at hand. He said, let no man deceive you by any means that for that day shall not come except there be a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed, <laughs> the son of perdition. Glory mm -hmm. to God. It is important mm -hmm. to understand that before the Lord comes back, there's going to be a great fall of worry. Verse number seven says, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who already now worked. let it, let it will let until he be taken out of the world and then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth uh, and would destroy with the brightness of his coming. So, mm -hmm. so that's why we need to always, yeah, I'm so grateful for all of you all who are on Bible study right Amen. now because you're being fed so that the, the stuff that the enemy brings up won't trick you. And that's why I've shared with you all, this is not just for us, but you ought not eat from everyone's table. Glory to God. Because some folks can, they got, they're great orators. Understand that none of us know more word than the devil. And so he can twist a phrase and use a word and come up with some stuff. And if you're just slightly familiar with it, or you heard somebody else say it, it will resonate. We don't get thrown off by stuff that's way off. We get thrown off by stuff that's close to us. People don't mm -hmm. trip over a six foot fence. They trip over little chips of wood. Mm -hmm. And so what we have to do is understand that we need to know God's word. We need to be filled with his spirit so that we have the Holy Ghost to be able to raise something up in us when the spirit ain't right. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Study God's word. Amen. Study to show yourself approved unto God. Ooh. Study means to meditate on, to mm -hmm. rehearse and know. Show yourself approved unto God. Workmen need not be ashamed. Properly using, rightly dividing, properly using word the word of truth. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We, <clears throat> I just um, end it right here. You can go over and you can read. Like I said, read the word. But <clears throat> before I hand it over to Pastor, I just want to um, read the end of this little phrase that I had at the end. He says, um, the Holy Spirit is our compass to follow in our daily life through prior meditation. Following the Holy Spirit is about trust. It will guide you towards love, peace, and wisdom. Remember, it's a journey of small steps, not giant leaps. Amen. It's in your hand, Pastor. Come on, you all. Clap your hands for Missionary Edmondson. Thank you so much. Glory to God, strengthened by the word, glory to God. It's important for us to, this journey, this journey we're on, the journey of the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit, journey of the Holy Spirit. Are, are there any other questions we can address and answer or speak to? I don't have all the answers. I want to make that very, very clear. Glory to God, but 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 there and here. Amen. So <laughs> glory to God. And by his spirit, we'll be able to find them. But it is my absolute responsibility to speak truth. And if I don't understand, to tell you, give me a minute, I'll find the answer. Glory to God. And, and the Holy Ghost, if God called me to this assignment, then it's his responsibility through my diligent search to give me understanding, especially with all of you all, because you're all studying the word too. Am I, am I making any sense? Uh, you all are studying the word together Glory to God. Bible, the Bible talks about the fact if any two of you shall agree is touching anything they ask God, God, don't you want, don't you think God wants us to understand his word? Glory to God. If we'll agree that we want truth, then God will give us truth. Any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God who giveth to all liberally and doesn't reproach you or rebuke you or braid you for 
requesting wisdom, understanding. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And in all thy getting, get understanding. Amen. Any comments or questions or anything? I don't want nobody to walk out of here tonight. We've talked about, it, it might seem elementary, but this is deep. People, people backslide. People walk away. You know, you know they call it backsliding for a reason because generally people don't jump out. They ease out. They slip out. Glory to God. They keep coming to church, but they don't get delivered from stuff. Glory to God. They keep singing in the choir, but they also start visiting folks they ought not be visiting. Glory to God. Can I they, they, they keep serving wherever they serve, but they also start sipping a little bit. Glory to God. It, there's a lot of things. They, they start going off on people. They go off and nothing happens negative. So then they go off again and nothing happens negative. So then they go off further. We backslide and the enemy does that thing so that many times we're not paying attention to what's going on. I told you real quickly and we go close out, but real quickly, I told many times y'all the story while I was fishing and I was catching fish, glory to God. And I didn't realize that my anchor on my boat had loosened. And I'm still trying to fish, but the tree that tree that I was catching fish by kept getting further and further away. And before I realized I was catching fish, so I was happy and I had to catch myself. My goodness, my anchors are loose because I was throwing right over there to catch the fish a minute ago. That tree is way over there now. Glory to God. Because my anchor had come loose and I was beginning to drift. There was a song that says, be sure your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. Amen. Are there any, any, any questions, any comments, any concerns? Because if you have a question, somebody else has it, so don't feel, you know, some kind of way. I got that phrase from y'all. Glory to God. All right. Thank you all so very much. I see a hand there. Uh, Mother Barbara Smothers. God bless you. Um, God bless you, missionary um, Edmondson. I truly enjoyed your message. And the high point for me was when you talked about the importance of fe feeding the Holy Spirit. And mm -hmm. you told us the way you do it is setting aside time and studying the word. And mm -hmm. you also said spending time in prayer and asking God to strengthen our inner being. That was just powerful to me. God bless you. Thank you. That was rich. Anybody else got something out of there you can recall? Anyone else? Glory to God. Uh, we're going to be moving on to uh, the announcements here in just a moment. Glory to God. But I surely want to make sure that uh, everybody knows that we had some good study tonight. Good word. Thank you again. Uh, Missionary Edmondson, glory to God. It is critical that we have this, this word, this study, that recognize we're on a journey with the Holy Spirit. We're on a journey with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Glory to God. So feed the Holy Ghost, feed the Spirit, and He will convict you. I talked about He'll unction you, He'll let you know. Glory to God. He'll convict you. Thank you so much. All right. I want to bless everybody tonight. Uh, ask all of you to get your best seed together. Would you do that tonight? Uh, glory to God. We ask those of you who will sow a seed of $10. Would you do that? Somebody put in, oh, Missionary Hope Ivory put in Hebrews 6 and 6. Glory to God. 6 and 6. Glory to God. I, we talking about the word. What, what does it say, Missionary Ivory, while we're getting our offering together? Glory to God. While we're getting our offering together. Glory to God. Actually, Muriel, um, Sister Muriel <laughs> read it earlier, but I was just focused on on this. It was earlier in the discussion. If they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance. And that's showing that there can be a falling away. There and can that be a falling there's away. a renewing that's needed. So I typed that in earlier in the discussion. Right. Thank you, Sister Muriel. You're right. There can be a falling away. But, but if they're apostate, you can't come back to what you don't believe in. Exactly. Right. Everybody got that? That's that's the point of that scripture. Glory to God. 
but but first John one and nine is absolutely appropriate. If you if you fall away, glory to God, and you still believe in God, just confess and ask God to forgive you. You you messed up. Just fess up. Remember we used to say that. Fess up. You messed up. 